Greetings and thanks for tuning in to this seminar. In this video, Dr. Childers is going to go over a few details such as what stem cells are, how stem cells heal the body, how to get stem cell treatment, Dr. Childers practice versus other practitioner methods, and finally, cost and payment options should you feel this is the right direction for you. Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Henry Childers. Um, thank you for coming and spending some time with us today. I want to start off by telling you about myself. I'm a board certified general surgeon and a cardiothoracic surgeon. And I have a concentration in molecular biology and biochemistry. Um, before medical school, I spent a lot of time playing sports like a lot of people, including professional yacht racing. And as a result of this, I sustained multiple injuries. Two arthritic knees, I had meniscus tear in both of them, an arthritic hip, and a right shoulder, which was not only arthritic, but basically partially frozen. I spent a lot of time trying to evaluate how I could repair these, or at least ease the pain and get more function. And I have a lot of orthopedic friends, and they all informed me the only thing I could do is have a replacement. And they warned me before I get a replacement, wait as long as possible because they're not permanent. I'd have to have it done at some point again. I would never get the same range of motion or function back. And there's no guarantee that it wouldn't hurt as much or more than it did now. And this is where I started looking into other alternatives, which brought me to regenerative medicine. Regenerative medicine is essentially stimulating your body to heal. And I became a patient of regenerative medicine before I became a practitioner. When I started researching what this was about, I realized this had to do with a lot of my research, which was gene expression, cellular repair. And I and not only did I get treated successfully, but it changed my career path. Because right now what I'm doing mostly is, essentially is cell biology medicine. As I mentioned, uh, I was on the crew of Stars and Stripes, and people think of sailing as a very nice sport. You go out and you sail around, but it's actually quite violent and rigorous at times, especially when you're in places like the Indian Ocean. Um, as a result of that and moving 100-pound sails around an unstable deck, you, over time, induce a lot of injury, and that's where mine came from. That's how I became a patient. That's why I became a practitioner. What we're gonna talk about today is several different things. Um, what are stem cells and what do they do? And what's the treatment protocol and the plan and how, how does this affect me and am, am I a candidate? Also, we're gonna talk about our methods of treatment versus other methods of treatment, not only in stem cells, but in other aspects like orthopedic surgery for replacement, opioids for pain relief, etc. And then I'm going to touch on the cost and payment options because that is always a very important point. So what, what is regenerative cell therapy? Essentially what it is, it's the body's ability to do what it's been doing for millions of years to build from an infant to an adult, to remodel tissue, to repair tissue, to replace cells. That's what we do. That's what we've always done. That's how we're able to evolve through you know, birth to old age. What we're going to concentrate on today is how regenerative medicine applies to orthopedic conditions. So we're talking about joints. I always use the knee because that's the most common joint we talk about, but shoulders and backs and wrists and hips and everything else. Regenerative cell therapy also applies to other conditions we're not going to get into, but everything from COPD to neurodegenerative diseases, etc. So what are stem cells and how do they heal us? Stem cells are what we call undifferentiated cells. They don't have a job or a personality yet. At fertilization, a sperm and an egg makes one cell. That divides into two. They're just cells without any identity. 
as the cells start to increase in size, they start to what we call differentiate or change into specific cells. But they all start from that same cell, and that's essentially what a stem cell is. It's undifferentiated. They're live cells, and that's important because what do live cells do? They divide. That means you're going to have more. And this is what separates it from a lot of the other treatments because a lot of things you do, you can apply or inject or take a medication and it will last for a period of time, but then it goes away. If you have live cells, they multiply. They're there for a long time. There are two different kinds of cells that we're going to talk about, stem cells, that we're going to talk about autologous and allergenic. One comes from you, the, your cells. The other ones we harvest from neonatal tissue, not from an embryo, but from umbilical cord and from placenta. And these are always from women who have a planned cesarean section and they're screened for nine months. And at the time of the cesarean section, mom meets the baby. And the placenta, which used to go into pathology and be destroyed, now grows into a sterile area. And out of that, you can harvest two things. One is called exosomes, we'll talk about that. And the other are stem cells. These are very good cells. We'll get into that later. Um, I mentioned the differentiation. So stem cells differentiate according to a signal that they get. If you break a leg, those injured cells give off a biochemical signal in the blood. That mobilizes stem cells. And that causes them to migrate to the area of injury. And it also causes them to differentiate or change into that type of cell. So this is the power of regenerative medicine that there is nothing else that can compare to it because of these specific facts. And now we're finding out one of the most important things that stem cells do is give off a biochemical signal. It's called a paracrine effect. And we're gonna again get into exosomes later, but exosomes are what are released by stem cells. And this goes to all of the other cells in the area and trigger those cells to act more like a repair cell um, in specific ways, which I'll get into. But that is kind of what we're finding is probably the most important property of regenerative medicine at this point. So treatable conditions, again, um, when we do regenerative treatments, IV with either exosomes or with stem cells, we're treating neurodegenerative diseases or COPD or different things. We're not going to really talk about that today. Today, what we're talking about is joints, muscle, tendon, joints, um, back, knee, hip. Uh, those are the most common shoulders. Those are the most common things that we see and that we treat. Although it applies to anything because that's how your body works. It repairs itself. So as I mentioned, there's two different sources of stem cells. One is autologous, that's yours. And there are two main sites that we can harvest from. One is bone marrow. And in bone marrow, you get a lot of what's called hematopoietic cells and some mesenchymal stem cells. That seems to be more appropriate for a lot of the IV treatments I was talking about that we're not going to get into. The other source is from fat. It's called adipose tissue. And the reason that is a superior resource is because two things. Number one, it's very rich in what we call mesenchymal stem cells. Mesenchymal stem cells are more specific for tissues like cartilage and muscle and bone, not so much internal organs. Also because everyone has a little extra fat to spare, but also the amount of stem cells we can harvest is multitudes more than we can get out of bone marrow. So you're getting a lot of the cells and the specific cells that you need to treat joints. The other source, as I mentioned, is allergenic, and that's the very good source. It's from neonatal cord blood or placental tissue where we're able to harvest those cells. The reason these cells are very important are because imagine an embryo or a neonate, meaning you're, you're just born, um, those cells have to generate for the first time all of the tissues. So the central nervous system, the brain has to grow from almost nothing. The bones and the cartilage have to grow from almost nothing. So they express certain genes that we no longer express as we get older. We don't have to. We're fully grown. If you keep growing, it's called cancer. So we stop the growth. 
And the properties they have and the exosomes that they produce have other qualities that ours don't. And that's why these are very important and very effective. We talked about fat cells, and this is when we're going to harvest yours. And you can see in the picture up here, those mesenchymal stem cells, depending on the trigger that they're getting, will, and that's going to be from injured tissue, can develop into nerve, muscle, bone, cartilage, etc. Depending on the signal, they will differentiate into specific tissues. And that's why it's so effective to treat all of these diseases. So um, when we, the way we used to treat was to take stem cells and inject them into a knee, and that was it, and goodbye, and we had very good results. The way I treat now, and I think it's going to be the way that everyone treats, and I've learned this from some very good people, unfortunately, it's not done as much as it should be, is we use multiple things to treat. Stem cells and the exosomes are the big bullet, okay? But there's other things, too, that aid. And I kind of tell my patients, it's like a symphony. There's a lot of instruments in the symphony. They all need to be playing. All the ducks have to be in a row. It shouldn't just be stem cells. We use PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma. A lot of people have heard about that. You draw blood, you spin it down. There's different ways to do this. But when you spin it down and you concentrate the platelets, they are very rich in growth factors, cytokines, chemokines. These are all um, biologic communicating proteins and specifically the growth factors, that's how everything, growth factors make things grow. Depending on the type of growth factor, it's going to stimulate certain growth. By concentrating these, PRP has been used for decades in, in most everything from wound healing. When I was doing cardiothoracic surgery, I used to use PRP on all of my wounds because it would make it heal quicker. And we know we weren't going to get an infection because it is immune modulatory as well. We use prolozone. Prolozone is ozone. It's an unstable oxygen species. We could have a whole talk on what ozone does, but essentially it does exactly what oxygen does, except it does it magnitudes better. It's unstable oxygen. Oxygen works in the mitochondria to stimulate cell function. I like to use the analogy of if you have a Ferrari and you use that really low-grade gasoline, what kind of performance are you going to get? If you put in jet fuel or whatever the highest grade fuel you can put in there, you're going to get much better performance. The, the mechanism is the same. The engine is the same. The tires are the same. Everything's the same. But you're getting much better performance. And that's essentially what ozone does. It stimulates cell function. All cell parameters are magnified when we use ozone. It's the strongest modulator of the immune system. It increases growth factor release, et cetera. So we use ozone for everything, mostly IV, but also directly injecting into joints because it's releasing growth factors. And if you release growth factors, you're starting a re repair process, a regeneration process, and uh, you are stimulating cell function. So it's anti-inflammatory by nature. Very important. And we use exosomes. Now, I'm going to talk about exosomes a little bit. Exosomes are, well, we're going to get into that in a second. I think I have a slide on that. But basically, when we want to treat, or when I want to treat now, in a regenerative cell therapeutic manner, I'm using these multiple things. But also, it's important to find out what your hormone levels are. Is your thyroid a little bit low? Because that needs to be optimized. Is your testosterone low? Testosterone builds muscle and bone, right? Do you need testosterone? Of course you do. As you get older, it diminishes. You want to make sure your testosterone is optimal. You want to make sure your diet is optimal. You want to make sure we're using these other things like the exosomes, the PRP, the stem cells, and the prolozone. We want to make sure your thyroid is optimal because these are all the instruments in the symphony. A patient of mine, we're going to show you a little clip of, of John. He has a testimonial, so we're going to cut to that, and I'll be back in a second. Hormonal, as you can see, they're all not the same. We don't 
and collect the little thing at the bottom. The superior way to do it is called a double spin method. And basically you condense it twice and what you're doing is you're concentrating the platelet rich plasma and you're getting rid of certain what we call polynuclear cells, their immune cells, which cause a lot of inflammation and we're isolating everything else. And by doing that, we are getting the best response through growth factors and cytokines for cell regeneration. Again, this is a nutrient-rich, hyperactive oxygen species. It does what oxygen does. It just does it magnitudes uh, better, more amplified. It stimulates cell function. It releases antioxidants. It increases energy production, just like oxygen does. We use it in blood to treat everything from Lyme disease to autoimmune diseases to professional athletes who want to maintain optimal health. We use it in joints because in joints, what it's doing is it's anti-inflammatory by nature because you're stimulating cell function. You're releasing growth factors. It's probably the best immune modulator that we know. And the immune system, everyone thinks the immune system fights disease. It does. But it's also responsible for repair and regeneration. The immune system is involved with everything. And when you modulate the immune system, you are going to get a better repair. Exosomes, as I mentioned, the lipid vacuoles, my cells, as we call them. And because they're lipid, they can easily basically just pop out of a cell and be absorbed into a cell. Stem cells release exosomes. Exosomes have micro RNA and messenger RNA. This is genetic material. And that's going to tell whatever cell it goes into what to do from a gene expression point of view. It also contains all kind of growth factors and cytokines, much in excess of what PRP does. If the exosomes that we use are from a neonate, it has all those gene expression qualities that the neonatal tissue has that we no longer have. And that's very important when we talk about regeneration, because again, a neonate has to grow cartilage and bone from nothing. We don't, we try to repair. They're growing from nothing. So the power of these in regenerative medicine is, is just profound. And again, the most important part we're starting to realize is probably the exosome function more than anything else. So our method and how we treat. When I started out, and the way it's generally done is you come in and however we get the stem cells, we're going to take those and we're going to inject those. Again, I'm going to use the knee because the knee is what we basically... Um, talk about mostly what we have are it started off by being a one treatment process you come in we use the cells we treat you go home and over time it gets better and there's the results were great as i mentioned before we've changed what we do and what we do now is a three-step process the initial treatment is going to consist of PRP, which we talked about, and prolozone, which is ozone. And the reason we're doing that is because we want to start a regenerative process. We also want to change the whole metabolism or the, the soil. The, we want to fertilize the soil. We want to get rid of the inflammation. We want to get rid of the lactic acid. So we're starting a regenerative process, and we're starting with a fertile ground. Okay. Because when I transplant stem cells in there two weeks later, I don't want to put them into an angry environment. I want to put them into a fertile ground. The second step, we harvest your stem cells or we use neonatal stem cells. And preferably, we combine those with exosomes. Now, exosomes are going to do two things. There's going to be an excess of exosomes, which when we put them into a joint is going to be absorbed into all the tissue in the area. And they're going to essentially transform a lot of those cells into acting more like a stem cell because it has the genetic material and those neonatal growth factors. But also what it does is if I harvested your stem cells, which we talked about, they're not as good as a neonates, perhaps, because you don't have some of that gene expression. 
But if I blend your cells with the exosomes, the 15 billion exosomes that we use, they're going to transform your stem cells into a more neonatal-like cell. So you're almost getting, you know, more bang for your buck because your stem cells are now enhanced to be more like a neonatal cell. And when we take this solution and inject it into the knee, the residual 15 billion exosomes are being absorbed into all of the other cells because they're lipid. They just get absorbed into cells and they're influencing, influencing those other cells to act more like a stem cell. Six to eight weeks later, we have you come back and we re repeat the first step. We call it a booster because, again, we just want to stimulate again. This is how we do it now. It used to just be stem cell. This makes much more sense. There's no way this cannot be better. And I think it's important to understand that we have long-term data on the old way, which was great. The new way that we're doing now, we haven't been doing for that long, so we don't have data, but uh, anecdotally, the patients are having a much quicker and a much better response. We're going to go to that testimonial now I talked to you about, a uh, patient of mine, John, who we treated, and let's see if we can get that clip. My name is John. Uh, at the procedure time, I was around 60 years old. Uh, had a problem with my knees, and uh, the, you know, it really... It did a, it was really difficult, you know, in my business construction and just general in sports too. I couldn't do much. And uh, so I originally come up uh, looking into having my knees done. <laughs> couldn't bend over, couldn't lift too many things. I had uh, several cortisone injections done to help, you know, alleviate the pain, um, but I wasn't getting any good results from it over time. And they just continued to deteriorate. And I was just having more and more trouble. Uh, you know, even getting up the stairs became a problem. The doctor said eventually I'd have to have knee replacement. And that was why, that was a big difference in coming to Dr. Childers because I really didn't want to go through a dual knee, knee replacement. Uh, I really couldn't afford to do it at the time because I would have had to have stopped all my work and everything. And I wanted to take the, you know, I'd done some research on the stem cell and decided I was going to try that first. It's been about 12 months uh, since my knees were done. And, um, I noticed instant relief. Um, it's been healing over the last year now. And I, I can do a lot more than I could before. And um, that worked very well. That totally cleared up all the problems I had. I was extremely happy with that. Well, I'm much more active and I feel a heck of a lot, heck of a lot better. I just, I'm pretty much pain free. Which was, which you know, was the, the best part about it. You know, it was just all the pains from both both issues. Uh, you know, they really tend to wear you down after a while. You know, and I'm not one for pain medications, um, so I was definitely happy with that. Uh, the the stem cell I, I'm I'm very impressed with because it's it's it has exceeded. I you know I was you know questionable can it do that? But every day they're coming out with more and more interesting stuff about stem cells, and it seems to be working very well. I think it was worth every bit that I had to put into it. Uh, hopefully the insurance companies will pick up on this someday because I, it's a lot cheaper to have the stem cell done, and I think um, you can get back on your feet a lot quicker than it does the surgeries. So that was John. He's a great guy. Really did well from uh, his procedure. And so, as I was saying, that's how we do it now. It's a three-step procedure. Cannot be, there's, there's no way it's not better than what we were doing before. The other methods that are available are, which most people do if you're going to get stem cells, is one treatment. You come in, you get a shot, and you go away. And that's it. And that, that's not the best. Not only do the three different treatments make a difference, but you have to take care of all of those other things like uh, you, you got to stop smoking. Um, you got to correct your hormones because they're an important part of the normal regenerative process. You, you got to get rid of the Doritos and the Coca-Cola because that's just kind of toxic, at least for a while. Let these things work. You don't want to take anti-inflammatories like Advil because that affects the immune system. And again, the immune system is part of the repair system. And for a while, if you have pain or something, you're going to take Tylenol. Um, fortunately, this is not painful. So there's no need to be taking it because of the procedure. And the other, the other method is the opioids. You're going to take 
pain medication, you're going to have a joint replaced. And if you think that's a picnic, you know, think again, you, you, that's downtime of what, six months. You're trying to rehab. Hopefully things went well, um, out of work, et cetera. Physical therapy is often done. And if you have degenerative disease of a knee, arthritis, it doesn't get better. You can do all the Band-Aid things. You can, you know, inject it with the Roostacomb, Synbisc, uh, steroids. Those are Band-Aids. They're not going to fix anything. They may temporize, but they're not going to fix. So those are the alternatives. The results, the results depend on multiple factors. Number one, genetics. Some people genetically do better than others. How bad is your condition? Did you let it go forever? I mean, are you in a wheelchair? Because it's going to be hard to get back running marathons if if you're, you know, that bad. Um, so the amount of disease. Um, lifestyle, you know, if, if you're morbidly obese, you're not going to do as well as if you're not. If you have a great diet and everything else and you're healthy, you'll do better than other people. And what's really important for anybody considering any kind of treatment is to understand that you have to have realistic expectations. This is not magic. It's biology. We know it works. This will make an improvement. You may not get to where you want it to be, but this will make an improvement. And I tell everyone you need to have realistic expectations. And I can talk about Aaron Rodgers and Lindsey Vaughn, the Olympic skier, and all these people who had stem cells and they ended up winning the Super Bowls or Olympics or whatever. They're young. They're healthy. They're not like us. The vast majority of people having stem cell therapy or any kind of regenerative therapy, they're over 50. And their expectations aren't to win the Olympics. It's, I don't want pain. I want to be able to play tennis or golf or you know do bike and do the things I was doing before, play with the grandkids. I don't want pain. I want my activity back. And those are realistic expectations for the vast amount, the uh, vast number of people. The community of regenerative scientists over decades, we've, how do you evaluate this? So what we've been trying to do at a year, year and a half's time is uh, survey people and find out, have you, did you reach the expectation you wanted to? Are you where you wanted to be? And about 90 to 92%, 95% of the people say they have. They, they achieved their expectation. 5% didn't. They had a bad procedure. Perhaps their expectations may have been very unrealistic. You know, their conditions, their genetics, who knows? But when you talk about 90 to 95% of the people getting to where they wanted to be, that's meaningful. And that's what these therapies do. And that's why this is so important. Will I be awake? Not only will you be awake, but we'll be chatting the whole time. Um, number one, I always go through and I tell people exactly what I'm doing. And this is if we're doing a harvest. So if we're going to extract the stem cells, basically what you do is you come into the office. The whole thing is going to take about two and a half hours. We put a little lidocaine on each side of the flank, um, each side of the stomach, and make about a one millimeter nick. And I have a very expensive piece of equipment. It's smaller than a cocktail straw. And it goes in and it distributes a solution called tumescence. And that loosens up the fat cells. And it's got some lidocaine in there for numbing. And it vibrates very quickly. And it's going to take me four minutes on each side to do. And I'm telling you as I'm doing it, and you're you know, you're remarking that it feels funny because it's vibrating, but it doesn't hurt. Then you're going to be there for half an hour Why this solution works. And at the end of the half an hour, I come back and it's going to take me about four minutes on each side to reverse the process and pull it out. Now, when I pull that solution out, I'm also, it's a mini liposuction procedure. I'm pulling out adipose tissue. This video basically shows you what, what there is. And during the procedure, we're either talking about the kids or the weather, or I'm explaining what we're doing. When we're done with that, and that takes, that's the first hour of the day, I'm taking those cells, basically 200 
milliliters or cc's of adipose tissue. I'm taken into the sterile hood area to process, and we put bandages on each side, and you go out and sit, you know, in the reclining chairs and watch TV or do whatever you want to do. And it was going to take me about an hour and a half to process the cells, to clean them and separate them and everything else. Now, if we chose to use exosomes, I'm going to add the exosomes to these cells because they're going to absorb into those stem cells to help transform them into a more neonatal like cell. And if we're not using exosomes, then as soon as I get the, the cells ready, we're going to take you back into the treatment area and it'll take me three minutes to inject into the knee or whatever joint it is. I use an ultrasound because I want to be precise. I don't like just blindly sticking. And some people say I've done it for 25 years. You may have, but you don't, you know, the end of that needle is like a scalpel. You don't know where that's going. Is it carving a trough through cartilage or sticking into, you know, a ligament or whatever? I like to see exactly where it's going. We go back, inject, and that's it. You get up, I put a Band-Aid on, you walk out. No limitations. Um, normal activity. We don't want you doing excessive things, but it's going to be normal activity. After each of the three stages, stage one with the PRP and the ozone, stage two with the stem cells, and then stage three, which is the PRP and the ozone. When you leave, it's normal activity. Don't want you doing heavy activity after this procedure for several months because you have an injury and we're trying to heal it. So it's very important. But the most important thing that we're talking about here is you're going to be awake through the whole time. It's not painful. Um, it feels funny. And the next day, you're going to feel like you did a million sit-ups because of the stomach or the harvest area, but the knee will, will have no effect whatsoever. We don't use general anesthesia or any other kind of sedation because we don't need to. Um, what can I expect? Again, it's same day. It's minimally invasive. It's outpatient. Um, important to know we don't manipulate these stem cells because when you do, remember how I talked about they'll differentiate and change? We don't want to manipulate because we don't want those changing into anything other than the injured tissue. And the injured tissue is giving off a signal that's going to stimulate those stem cells. So we want to keep them as clean as possible for when they go in. And as I mentioned before, it won't hurt. We use a little um local anesthesia on each side a little wheel with a 32 gauge needle some people are, oh you did it already they don't even notice it um i don't like needles and i didn't when i had mine done i didn't even feel it so it's pretty easy there's another patient of mine ruthie that i want to show you a little video on um i think we treated her maybe a year ago or something um but here's ruthie Hi, I'm Ruthie, and I'm 59, and I'm from Georgetown. I started the treatment because I had a torn meniscus. They were going to do surgery to repair the meniscus, um, and then it was the post-care that was concerning me the most, and then there was no guarantee that this was going to work. So that's when I saw um, Dr. Childers with, with, his, with his procedures, and he sat down with us for over an hour, and he explained everything, what it is, what it does, why it is the better procedure, and, and I was ready. I was ready to have my life back. I couldn't even walk out to my mailbox. That's how bad my knee had gotten. And it took three days, and he said, it'll be three or four days before you really start noticing. He was exactly right. The third, third day, I really started noticing. I was walking better. I could stand before I couldn't stand more than two or three minutes at a time. Now I'm taking a complete shower without having to sit down. You know, so I was noticing that there was improvement just after that one single treatment. I was walking so incredibly well. So another question that people frequently ask is how long will it take for me to feel better? And it depends. Oftentimes, within leaving the office or within a couple of days to weeks, people feel better. That's not because we built tissue. That's because we've changed the environment and it's anti-inflammatory. And a lot of that lactic acid and inflammation is what caused a lot of the pain. We're starting the regenerative process, but it's kind of like you plant crops. You don't have anything tomorrow. 
it's going to take a while. Biology is not fast. If you break a leg, it's going to take 14 weeks or something to heal. And to rebuild tissue is going to take some time. We usually, within weeks to a month or so, people feel better. But to really get the meaningful change, it's going to take a little bit longer than that. And normally, we say at about four months is when we really start to develop. You know, this, we put that little video in because that's how it was sped up. They don't grow that quickly, nor do you heal that quickly. Um, and what it really takes is a lot of patience. Um, how much does it cost? Well, regenerative cell therapy typically costs about half as much out-of-pocket expenses as having a surgery. And when you have a surgery, you have the not only the downtime and the loss of income potentially, but the deductibles and the co-pays and the, you know, how they can nickel and dime you for every different thing. Um, time, pain, rehab, um, it, it, it's, a, it's a big process to go through there. There's a simpler way. Why not look at it? Big question, how much does it cost? Prolozone, that's ozone we talked about. For an injection, it's $250, okay? I try to be cheaper than everybody. And I, you know, I, I really try to see what people are doing and have a better product for less price. PRP is $1,500, and that's pretty inexpensive. Exosomes are $2,800, but they basically, if you look at what exosomes sell for, it's going to be $3,000 to $4,000. So we're really trying to undercut the price. And when we combine those with exosomes, again, we try to discount it more, and it's going to be $3,800. When we used to do stem cells, you come in for the one-day stem cell thing that I told you about that we don't do anymore. That was $8,000, and that was on the low end of, you know, you, you, you look around to see what prices are. That's the low end. It was $8,000. So how much does it cost? If you add up the two prolozones, the two PRPs, and the stem cells, that comes to $11,500. It's a lot of money. It's out of pocket. What we've done is kept the price at $8,000. Even though we're doing a prolozone and a PRP pre-treatment, and post-treatment, we haven't increased the price. We left the price at $8,000, and you're clearly getting a, a better product. There's no doubt about it. Um, if you want to add exosomes, and I really do strongly recommend it, um, it's we charge $2,000, so it's even discounted more because it just influences the whole process so much more. Not only the whole joint, not just the disease tissue, but also so the stem cells that we're going to use to put in. So the exosomes, the $2,000 more, is really um, worthwhile, in my opinion. In addition to that, so let's say that's $8,000, or if you use exosomes, it's $10,000. If you want to do another joint, because I have two bad knees or a shoulder or whatever it is, typically it's going to be that price again, 100% again. So it's going to be, instead of 10, it's going to be $20,000. What we do is if you're going to have an additional joint done, it's $1,500. Okay, so 15%. It's not 100%, it's 15%. And to be honest with you, I think it's fair because I'm not doing twice the work. So why should we get twice the money? The products cost what they, we have no control over the price of the products. But we like to discount it because I think that's fair. Is it covered by insurance? Please read this, that um, little thing about, <laughs> I'm gonna look down on my screen. No treatment, uh, treatments are not covered by insurance, although uh, x-rays and um, office visits and, and all of that thing, all, the, all of those things, the typical things are covered by insurance, but they don't cover anything natural or that's not patented. Um, essentially. And, and this is interesting. And this is the Medicare guideline, a treatment plan that seeks to prevent disease, promote health and prolong and enhance the quality of life, or therefore that is performed to maintain or prevent deterioration of a chronic condition is deemed not medically necessary. Are you kidding me? Most insurance companies follow that guideline. Stem cells, 
because they are going to not only naturally treat, but prevent for the disease, they don't want to cover that. They'll cover the toxic chemicals and the pharmaceuticals and all of that, but they don't want to cover anything natural. PRP, they don't want to cover it. Ozone therapy, they don't want to cover it because it prevents and treats naturally. I don't get it. Uh, hopefully, we're going to have a change in how our medical system works, but that's what it is right now. All the discounts of finances. Yes, um, we do have financing options, 0% for a year. You have to qualify. Um, we know that uh, insurance will cover the typical things they cover. And believe me, I try to, I like making them pay for everything if I could. Um, the ultrasound fees and the needle fee, all that stuff is covered by insurance, but they won't cover the stem cells or the PRP or the ozone. Um, it is covered under HSA. So you, if you have HSA, at least they will pay for it. Um, but it's not the same as having insurance pay for it. Anyone who's watching this video, if you come in for consultation, we're going to reduce the price by another thousand dollars because we appreciate you coming in. And that's essentially, you know, 10 percent off. Um, for being here in so social isolation, and we appreciate it. So if you're interested, I think there's a link where you can schedule the consultation. Uh, we'd love to see you in the office. We're going to sit down speak specifically on your condition. And of all the things we mentioned today, understand everyone can be customized. Not everybody needs, if you have tendonitis, you don't need stem cells. You, you know, prolozone is probably great. So it really depends on what your condition is. It's not a, you know, um, one thing fits all. It's specifically catered to you. So we need a consultation. If you're going to come in, please have someone else with you because they'll remember things you forget or maybe some questions that you forget. And also, if you have any, um, if you had MRIs or x-rays, bring in the report. You don't have to bring in the disc. Just bring in the report. Any labs that you had, please, because it's so crucial. We want to know what your hormone levels are because that's so important. And that's it. Give us a call. And I hope we can see you. And I hope we can uh, take care of you. Wash your hands. Yeah. And Thank you. That's good, so. we, have, we have some questions that people have uh, written in. And so we're going to try to get to those. If you give me one second. Sure. Yeah. Either that or just. So first question, I think there's been several. So this is from Dean. How are you doing, Dean? What device do you use to collect stem cells and platelet gel, et cetera? We use a Millennium system, which is probably the, that is the preeminent system for collecting stem cells right now. That's the one I was telling you about, a very expensive piece of equipment. Tiny little cannula that we insert. It, it uh, sonicates very quickly. It dispenses the tumescence. Then we change that to something where we're going to pull out the stem cells after. Millennium Medical, you can look them up. They are the leader uh, for PRP, we use um, a double spin method, which means we have two different tubes. It's more extensive, it's more expensive, but it is the best way to uh, collect um, PRP. The way it used to be is you just get a test tube and you spin them down and you try to separate the different layers. It's very unscientific. And unfortunately, when you do that, you can get those polynuclear cells I told you that can cause the inflammation. You also get more red blood cells, which we all like red blood cells, just not in a joint because that can cause inflammation too. Next question. This is uh, from Mina. I have knee pain every day in both knees. I have two torn meniscus. I had that. Uh, in my right knee, did arthroscopic surgery, but it's not gotten better. I'm still in pain. Can stem cells help? Yes, th this is the problem. Uh, when you have procedures like that, it doesn't always help. Imagine, and, and here's an important concept too. Meniscus is white. You've seen, most people have seen what a meniscus looks like. You know what cartilage looks like, right? It's white. What does that mean? There's no blood supply. How are you getting nutrients in? What's in the middle of a knee joint? Synovial fluid, that's a lubricating fluid. How do stem cells get around? Through the bloodstream. 
So how do they get into a joint? It's hard for them. This is why people have arthritis. Stem cells treat everything else, but it's hard to treat those tissues because there's not a lot of blood supply. That's why when we deliver directly into the joint, the stem cells, now they're there. Now they can work. Now the exosomes can work, the PRP, the growth factors, et cetera, because we've just introduced them to a space that typically can't get the nutrients because they don't have the blood supply. Um, when you have a meniscal tear, very well treated with regenerative th uh, cell therapy, um, depending on the type of tear. If it's a long tear, sometimes in a flap and it's moving around, it's hard to do anything but to remove that. But we've treated people with meniscal tear. And when we talk about arthritis, what that means is a lack of cartilage. And those are the typical patients that we treat. They do very well. Um, we, I, I, as I said before, I'm doing it this specific way because I'm getting better results. But you are a classic case of, of what we treat every day with regenerative cell therapy with great results. Is there a chance for rejection? No. There's not a chance for rejection. First of all, if we're using your cells, then you don't reject your cells. When we use exosomes, exosomes, you remember me saying, they're kind of a lipid micelle, which means like a little lipid ball, like fat ball, with all the information inside. It's acellular. It doesn't have a nucleus. It's not a cell. So there is no rejection. If we use neonatal stem cells, they're too early to have the identity of being your cells. So any neonatal tissue is not going to be rejected. As soon as you start developing and differentiating tissue, then what it has is certain, identi certain identification and your body will know whether it's your cell or not. Just like if you have a heart transplantation, if you don't immunosuppress, the immune system is gonna attack the heart, but nothing will attack neonatal stem cells, exosomes, or your own stem cells. So there is no rejection. Can someone on a fixed income afford this treatment? Um, well, I mentioned that there's a, you know, we do have the financing at 0% financing. Um, there are two payments. You know, we pay, uh, the, the payments are at the first treatment and at the second treatment, it's basically half and half. And, you know, a lot of people came in and I, I don't want to, qualify anyone's economic situation, but we have a lot of people, including people you saw in the video, who came in and they needed to do this because they needed to be able, they got the rest of their life in front of them. They wanted to be able to be pain-free and ambulate and do the things they wanted to do. Um, it's a lot easier for a billionaire to do this, but I think a lot of people say, well, you know, am I worth it? Is my health worth it? Do I want to be able to spend the rest of my life walking around and doing things, or do I want to be in pain? And again, I can't, I'm not going to give people personal uh, economic advice on what they should do or what they should not do. But if you think about it, the things we spend $8,000 on in a year between movies and dinners and, you know, booze and whatever it is, uh, versus your potential to be able to ambulate for the rest of your life without pain, that's your decision. But anybody on any income can get treated this way with very good result. Another question. I'm 32 years old with a shoulder injury, and I'm, am I too young? No. And here's the, here's the kicker. Again, I told you, with me, I was told, wait as long as you can before you have that replacement. Because you're going to have to have it done again. They don't last forever. You may never fully recover, you won't have the same range of motion or, you know, activity level that you did before. And you may still be in pain or more pain. There's no guarantees with that either. Wait as long as you can. And any orthopedic surgeon will tell you that for a replacement. If you want regenerative surgery done, do it as soon as you can. Do it before it gets worse. You want to do it when it's, you know, you only got to make up five yards, not 50 yards worth of repair. Um, younger people do better because they're typically healthier. Their hormones are more optimal than when you're, when you're 50 and 60, everything starts to peter out. That's why we have to supplement. You know, if you need more testosterone, we should take care of that. But when you're young, you 
are close to your optimal health and you're going to do better. So absolutely, the younger you are, the better you are. And the last question, can this only treat joint pain? No, this can treat anything within reason. Again, remember, your genetics play a big part of this. And there's a lot of things. So within, if you have a genetic disorder, uh, we're not going to change your DNA, no matter what we do. Can I say that question again? Um, so for the sake of this talk, we're talking about joints. Now, I have another slide that wasn't in this presentation, but of all the things stem cells will treat, and it's a tennis elbow and all this, why would you resort to stem cells to treat tennis elbow? Ozone, prolozone will treat it for $250. Why are you going to spend $8,000? Yes, it will treat it, but it's overkill. For things like that, I don't know why you would do it, and I don't recommend it to people because there is a much more cost-effective way to treat those sorts of things. We use regenerative cell therapy to treat anything that the body would typically treat because all you're doing is stimulating the body to do what it does. You're just concentrating that effort. COPD is treated. That's IV. Rheumatoid arthritis and other autoimmune diseases are treated. Neurodegenerative diseases are treated. Basically, if you have an injury, what do stem cells do? They're going to go to the site of the injury. Why? Because injured tissue are giving off those biochemical signals and you it attracts, you home in on that signal. So if you have injured tissue, those cells are going to go to the injured tissue. So basically, it can treat anything that the body typically treats. It's not magic, okay? But it's replicating the body's ability to repair and regenerate and remodel. And this is what we've done. We've evolved to do this over millions of years. We're just concentrating that effort into certain sites to repair. So, um, so anyone, please schedule a consult. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Every case is different. It's going to be customized. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Socially isolate. Thank you. Sorry. Take the first step and have a detailed consultation with Dr. Childers. Click the Schedule a Consultation button today and you will receive a 10% discount off the total for attending this online seminar.